Good morning everyone. Today we're doing a compression test here on our 240Z. Now we'll do both a dry and a wet compression test. A wet compression test essentially will see if the uh, if the piston rings are in good shape or if they're not. Now I'm expecting to see some pretty low compression here. This car is 43 years old, has 175,000 miles. They are known to be rebuilt around 200,000 miles or so. So my guess is some cylinders may be a little low on the compression. We should see, if we see 150 among all six cylinders, that would be fantastic, but we'll see what we come back with. So I'll show you the steps involved along with the tool, and uh, let's get right to it. Now the first thing before you do this test is verify that the acceleration pedal is all the way down fully open, or the throttle is fully open. And the second thing is if you have a choke, which this vehicle does, you want to make sure that the choke is fully open. So this is closed, and this is open. So right here is the throttle linkage. There's two ways you can keep the throttle open. If you have a dumbbell, something like a 20, 25 pound dumbbell, just place it against the accelerator pedal, and that will keep it open. The other way is if we rotate this, we can insert a flathead screwdriver So fortunately, these spark plugs are very, very easy to get to. The one thing you, you want to make sure is don't mix up the wiring. Now fortunately, on these spark plug wires, they are numbered. So number one cylinder, number two is listed there. I'm not sure if you can see that, but each plug here, excuse me, each wire here is labeled. So we can just, here's four, five, and six, place these to the side. And now we'll remove the spark plugs. Now they do make a spark plug socket tool. A lot of time you'll find these in tool sets. Interestingly enough, this is too small for our 240Z. These looks like they're 18 millimeter uh, ends on the spark plug. So just double check before you do this job. If you have a uh, spark plug socket, this is really more for modern vehicles. On these older vehicles, usually you may need a larger socket. So we'll start with number one, cylinder number one here. Okay. Now when you remove the spark plug, it's a good idea just to keep them in order. So that's cylinder number one, and then this will be number two here, three, and so forth, and keep them in order so when you're ready to reinstall them, you know exactly which, which cylinder they came from. It's always a good tip if you can just to do that. Now very quickly, I just pulled this from cylinder number three, and look how oily it is. Compared, this is number one. Also number two looked uh, pretty much the same. You have that rust uh, tan look, which is a, a normal burn. But look how oily number three is here. Chances are these piston rings are, uh, are leaking. I'm guessing we're, we're going to see some pretty low compression on number three, but you can get a pretty good idea just by looking at the spark plug. And when you do this test, you want to have a pretty good tester. In other words, this is a Craftsman. It's on the higher end, around $70. You can find these for around 25 bucks. I know Actron, a lot of people like Actron on Amazon. Even Sears has them for around $25. But the way I feel about this test is I want something that is going to be uh, something that's made very well. That's just the way I feel about it. Plus, you get a lot of different adapters with the Craftsman kit. In this case, we need the 14 millimeter. So this is where this is the same thread size as the spark plugs, okay? And let me just clean this up. So what we're going to do is use the adapter. We're going to thread it in to the spark plug hole. Okay, then you grab the tool. The tool connects on the end. Just pull up this little lever. Insert it. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay. We'll place this over here. I'll point the camera toward it, and then what you're going to do, also make sure, I forgot to mention, make sure that you disconnect, in this case, the coil. We don't want any, any sparks going on. But right here, we'll see what kind of reading we come back with. So 160 pounds, that's a good number. So we'll keep on testing. Let me just zoom down the camera here. 
Now we'll go ahead and test number two, three, four, five, and six. So as you can see, we do have a very low reading here on cylinder three. So what we're going to do is what's known as a wet compression test. We'll add a little bit of oil right into that spark plug hole, something like a teaspoon at most a tablespoon, and then we'll redo the test. If we see an increase in compression, that's a good indication that the rings are worn out. If we don't see a change, then that's a good indication that the valves need to be replaced or we have a leaking valve somewhere. So let's see what the results are. So we did see an increase in the compression, so that tells us that the piston rings do need to be replaced. They're just worn out. And that makes sense because, again, when we pulled the, the spark plug from number three, it was pretty burnt up like it was burning oil. And not only that, 43 years old, 175,000 miles, it's to be expected. On these 240Zs, around 200,000, uh, that's usually a pretty good number when people start rebuilding these motors. So the big thing on my end is what do I want to do in other words do I want to put in a different type of motor um, I'm thinking rebuild it just because uh, like I said in the previous film it's a one owner vehicle the numbers match so I think we'll do a bottom end rebuild uh, and then when it comes to the top end I think that's what we're going to do a little some changes regarding changing the carbs and things like that but we'll get to that when we when uh, when we go over it so we will be pulling this motor and training together uh, pretty soon. The other thing to note very quickly re regarding this test, you can go to the next step. In other words, let's say you do find a low compression somewhere, you could do something called the leak down test. And Eric the car guy has an excellent video on this. And a leak down test, what you're doing is you're inserting compressed air into a cylinder and then you're finding the exact cause of the leak. And uh, on this gauge, it will tell you if, the, if, if you have a massive leak, a small leak, and that sort of thing. A pretty good number, 5 to 10% of air being lost is usually pretty good. That's perfectly fine. Some motors, even 20%, but really, if you see a massive loss of pressure or that the, the air is escaping, it's pretty cool, this test, because you could check the intake, you can check the exhaust on the car, and you'll hear air hissing, uh, the coolant, the radiator, and you can pinpoint where the problem is. I'm not going to go through that in this step, in this case, just because I know exactly what's going on, plus I was planning on pulling the thing anyway. So that being said, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this, you learned something. We'll see you soon regarding pulling the motor on this vehicle, and uh, we'll see you then.